Hello everyone and welcome, Dome here. Many of you have been asking about this video and here it is. Today I'm going to show you how to do parallel compression in Cubase the right way. Let's get started. Parallel compression can really help you when it comes to mixing for pretty much everything. So for vocals, for bass, it can make your vocals sound thicker and help them sit in the mix very well. Watch the video that I've done for mixing vocals and you'll see what I mean. But same goes for bass. Again, bass is an instrument that benefits a lot from parallel compression. So let me know in the comments down below if you want me to make a dedicated video about each instrument in parallel compression and what techniques you can use to make these instruments stand out. Now, for drums, again, it's a very, very useful technique. Parallel compression, New York style compression, this is what we're going to do here today. And with drums, what parallel compression allows you to do is you can give your drums more alive you can give them sustain, you can bring out the room, you can give them punch, you can make them bigger in the mix because, you know, many times on busy mixes, drums tend to become like little hits, like something like this. So a very good trick is to add parallel compression in order to add sustain and room to your drums. And why do we do this in a parallel channel and not on the main channel? Because if you start compressing quite a bit, then you squeeze the life out of your material. So parallel compression gives you the best of both worlds, the bigness of the compressed sound, but also the natural sound of the original recording. So. I have this drum recording right here. This is a simple drum pattern. Let's say I want to add a little bit of life to this drum kit. It's quite dry, so I can give it a little bit more sustain, a little bit more oomph. So how do we do this in Cubase? Let me show you. There are many ways, but let me show you a very clean way that you can do this. You go to your drums channel. I'm going to go here. And as you can see, we have our inserts and we have our sense. Now we're not going to place the parallel compressor on the inserts. Okay. Even if you do wet and dry controls, you will end up changing the balance of the dry signal versus the compressed signal. So instead, we're going to add our compression as a send effect. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go right here, right click and say add effects channel to send to. So I'm going to go here. And as you can see, I have already selected a compressor that I really like to use when I do parallel processing parallel compression. And this is the CLA 76 from Waves. I'm going to link it down below if you're interested in checking it out. So when I do this, I go stereo because this is a stereo bus. Okay. If you're dealing with a kick drum or a snare that are mono, you can just set this to mono. Okay. That's totally fine. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say parallel drums. And I'm going to call it Parallel Drums 2 because I've already created one because I want to show you all the different compressors that I use for parallel compression. So I'm going to hit Add. And as you will see, this created a channel right here. So this is my Parallel Drums 2 channel. And basically this I'm going to blend to the original signal. Now, here's some homework you need to do. And that's why I said you need to do this the right way. First of all, you need to make sure that your gain staging is right. So if your drums here are going to zero and they're exceeding zero, the compressor is going to go nuts. So let me play this for you. So we haven't added any compression yet. As you can see, I have a healthy level here. And now I can start driving the parallel channel. So this is my channel. So I'm going to straight away go to zero. Okay straight away because I want to have a copy of this going to my parallel compressor. So the CLA 76, which is right here. Okay. Now the other thing I want to make sure is that my effects send is in pre fader mode. And in order to do this, I just have to click on this and you need to make sure that this dot here is on the left, not on the right. Right means post fader. Why do we need to do this? Because I'm going to show you. Let's say I go here to my drums. I'm going to open my 
1176 from my effects channel and I'm gonna keep it here and I'm gonna go back to my drums. Now if I have this in post fader mode, check what happens to the compressor. So we're compressing around 7 dBs. We're going to set this up, don't worry. But check what happens if I say, okay, I want to mix the drums a little bit lower. See what happens? We don't drive this compressor enough. Actually, we don't drive it at all. So we don't want that. Why? And there are no hard rules, but this is something that I consider myself a little bit of a rule. You want to drive the compressor consistently. You don't want to have the compressor work in a different way when you move the fader because this is going to drive the compressor in a very different way and this is going to make the compressor work less or more and your volume will fluctuate on your parallel channel. So instead, do this, go pre-fader. This means that even if I completely turn my drums down, we still get the compressor. See, it doesn't matter because it's going pre-fader. Now, this is why I say you have to make sure your gain staging is right. If you have wrong gain staging here and you're overloading the channel or you actually don't feed the channel with enough signal, then the compressor is not going to react the way you want to. So now let's try and come up with some settings. So I'm gonna go fast attack, fast release. And I tend not to want to overload my compressor, so I try to make sure that I don't overload the CLA-76 so it doesn't go in the red zone here. So let's try all buttons in. So as you can see, I'm compressing a lot. Now, an amazing feature that we have in Cubase that is missing from many DAWs and it kills me when I have to mix in other DAWs, which is very rare these days, is this listen button. Now, this listen button allows you to listen to just the compressor, the parallel compressor, without doing any weird things here. So if I go here, I press L, I'm only going to listen to the parallel compressor. So you hear the saturation. Let's try the two types. So bluey is way more saturated, is way more aggressive. So I can play a little bit with the different ratios. Okay, and now I'm going to turn off listen. By the way, if you want to use listen, you have to have control room activated in Cubase. If you don't know why, I'm going to link a video that I've done in the past right here where I tell you why you should always use Control Room in Cubase if you're on Cubase Pro. So now we have this, I'm going to start blending this channel with the original. So this is my drums and this is my parallel channel, see? This is the channel that we created, the effects channel. So now I'm going to start blending this in. So see how much weight these drums acquired. Let's try the bluey. So as you can hear, this will be even more apparent when we add it to the mix. So as you can hear, we bring out these ghost notes, we add more body to the sound in general. And in this case, I want to show you what I actually use for parallel compression when it comes to drums. And I have an example here. I have, first of all, the CLA-76, which is 
something that I use all the time. Another compressor that I use, this is the arouser. This is a distressor emulation from the company that actually makes the distressor. And this I use all the time for parallel drums and vocals. So let me show you how this, I'm going to hit listen. And rivet mode is pretty much uh, the equivalent of all buttons in, in an 1176. So let's have a listen. You can also have a detection circuit here so the kick drum doesn't trigger the compressor. So it opens up the sound quite a bit. But let me show you how it sounds with the original drums now. You can play with the attack and release time depending on the song. I mean, for this song, I wouldn't go for a super roomy sound because I still want to keep the groove and I still want to keep the rhythm tight and staccato. I don't want to make this too mushy. But this is how you would play if you want a little bit more punch for your parallel compression. You can open the attack ever so slightly. But I wouldn't go over the top with this. Now, another compressor that I use a lot is the Dynamite Slam from Softube. This is a very extreme compressor, but it can really bring out the room. Let me show you. I'm going to play it in solo first. So it almost creates an envelope. It's really, really powerful, and it doesn't sound like the other compressors. They all have a different character. So let me blend this in now. It feels like the drummer has a little bit more energy, you know, it feels almost like added reverb to the drums. It's very, very interesting. Listen to just the drums for a second. Almost like sidechain. Polite. Really cool. Okay, 11.76. Body, arouser. So, to sum up, what do you need to do in order to do parallel compression in Cubase? Create an effects channel for the channel you want to parallel compress. Then make sure, make absolutely sure that your gain staging is right so you're driving the compressor in a healthy level and then also make sure that your send is pre-fader. So not post-fader, pre-fader. The dot is on the left side. Then you go to your compressor as a rule of thumb, very common settings are high ratios, fast attack, fast release, which in the CLA-76 is all the way to the right, by the way, and adjust your output. Make sure you have a good amount of compression. You want to add quite a bit of compression there. And then pull down your FX channel fader, and while your drums are playing, just start adding it. And what I tend to do is I tend to add more of it in the busy sections of the song when there's a chorus or many instruments are playing together, and maybe less of it in a less busy section of the song. Feel free to experiment with the compressors. A great compressor in Cubase to add parallel compression is the vintage compressor because it has this 1176 kind of sound. So just before I leave you, I'm gonna show you how you can do this here as well. So I'm gonna go for input, fast attack, fast release, 
20 to 1 ratio and then I'm going to drive the input. The vintage compressor is actually amazing, so I use it all the time. So there you go, my friends. This is how you do parallel compression in Cubase the right way. If you enjoyed this video and if it helped you out, please consider giving it a like because it really helps me out. These videos are not sponsored, so I really appreciate your support. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!